everything was feeling really, really good. And to this stage, I mean, my dad, my dad asked me the following day, what, you know, what was you thinking? And the honest truth is, I couldn't tell you. Picked on by Carnu. Uh, Lynn by Primus said, listen, you better go and see him, go and apologise to him. And I said, was it that bad? He said, yeah, it was, it was bad. Oof, and there was a thunderous challenge there by Thatcher. I wish, that's one moment in my life I wish I could erase. I've got children now and you know, with the computers and YouTube and that, they've seen that and, you know, having to explain that to your children. Yeah. Ben Thatcher, why Ben Thatcher? Um, one, because he's a very interesting character. Two, he's one of the nicest lads that I've met since I've been at City. I've remained friends with him and kept in touch with him. This is uh, on a more serious note, it's a bit different from the daft pranks that I've done in the past, but I'm taking this seriously. I find it very interesting. Um, I've done a lot of research and study on him, so hopefully I'll be going into the meeting with uh, a lot of information at my disposal. Your early days in football, you, you were at Canterbury Christchurch University where you were starring in the team. I'm going to have to stop you, Chabby. OK. My mum has obviously hacked into the Wikipedia page and developed that because she was fed up with people digging me out all the time, so she put a little bit on there to make me a nicer person, a more intelligent person and less a stereotypical footballer. I actually never went to any university, but it does say that on the Wikipedia. So you never actually played for Canterbury Christchurch never University been team? There. Never been there. Uh, so which team did you play for them before you actually signed professional football? Uh, a team called St Thomas More. Uh, in the Sea Cup area, it was a Sunday league side. It went straight from there to Millwall, nowhere near Canterbury. Could you take us through a brief history starting at the Den? Uh, Bruce Rioch signed me when I was a schoolboy. Unfortunately, he was sacked before um, I actually joined the club when I left school. Uh, Mick McCarthy was the manager there. I was petrified of him. 16, <laughs> 17 years of age. Two or three players broke through at the same time. It was fantastic. It was a uh, number two called Ian Evans there. It really took time for the young ones. Had to develop. Mm -hmm. And Mark Kennedy was the first player from my age group to break through. Mm -hmm. uh, I followed him. And uh, I went on. I think I played about 100 games there. Yeah. Great times. We got relegated. And I was on holiday years before mobile phones or anything like that. And I, I arrived back to me digs. And they told me I'd been sold to Leicester. Didn't have a clue what was going on, and I panicked really. I just didn't. I didn't know what to do. I wanted, didn't want to leave Millwall. Went back to Millwall and said, "Don't want to leave." And the next day, Sam, a man, phoned me, and uh, I went and met him in London. And I was just wanted to get it over and done with. I think I was in his house, signed within half an hour, and then uh, went on. Had a great time there. Fantastic club. Yeah. Just caught the tail end of the crazy gang, but yeah. there was enough of it to open my eyes. Just to influence you a bit. Yeah, it was it, it was fantastic. I've got to say, it was. Um, You'd never get away with it these days. No. Never ever. Kevin Keegan rang me up and said he wanted to speak to me. So I rang my father up, who's a massive Southampton fan, and he was so excited that he was going to go and get to meet Kevin Keegan. Uh, he drove down from Wales and met me at, I think, Lim Truck Services or something or other, and we drove in. I don't think I got a word in. My old man was driving Kevin Keegan mad about Southampton. But in the 10 minutes of my old man shut up, I ended up signing the contract. Um, I came in the summer, I think I just put my car, my foot, my car was open, I put my foot on the tarmac and I see this uh, lunatic running towards me, it looked like his hair, brushed his hair with a firework and he was claiming boot money off me before I'd even got out my car, Mr Les Chapman and uh, I joined a great change room there, some really good characters, Richard Dunn, Paul Dickoff, Nicky Weaver. Um, great lads. And the young boys as well, great crack with the young boys, Willow Flood, Paddy McCarthy, you know, he hadn't been long in the, the new stadium and it was, uh, it, was, uh, it was a good time. I'm going to have to ask you this because uh, it'll be one question that I would think every City fan and everybody in Manchester would want me to ask. The uh, Mendes incident, um, uh, what, what are your memories of the night and, and in the aftermath did you apologise? Have, have you seen him since? Or? Um, the, well, the, I think it was the second game of the season, I think. Uh, I think we played Chelsea first game of the season. Uh, we got beat. And I remember Piercy pulling me and saying, listen, you had a good pre-season. So I felt good about myself. I felt mm -hmm. like, you know, I wanted to knuckle down, have a really good season. Everything was feeling really, really good. And to this stage, I mean, my dad, my dad asked me the following day, what, you know, what was you thinking? 
And the honest truth is, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you what I was thinking. I honestly, now, Chappie, can tell you, I don't know whether I hit him. At the time, I don't know whether I hit him with my arm, my elbow, my head. Everything, I've just, I think. Yeah, I've just run at him, you know. I've got to be honest, I didn't realise the severity of it until um, it was their centre half after the game. Uh, Limby Primus said, "Listen, you better go and see him, go and apologise to him." And I said, "Was it that bad?" He said, "Yeah, it was. It was bad." Picked on by Carnu. There was a thunderous challenge there by Thatcher, which Glenn Johnson didn't like. I wish, that's one moment in my life I wish I could erase. I've got children now and yeah. with the computers and YouTube and that, they've seen that and, you know, having to explain that to your children. Yeah. I went in to see Piercy the following day, obviously I never slept. I remember going into my house, it was an evening game, and I remember seeing my wife in bed looking at the telly. She said, what have you done? It's Pedro Mendes. Well, uh, oh, dear. Now, now yes. I've seen it again, he's late. He's late. That well, was an uh, ugly challenge. Yeah, that's got to be on the brink of a, of a red. Because the ball's gone and he's come through late. And it was only then that I actually saw the coverage. Mm. And um, the worst thing about it was that my little girl, you know, would have been, I don't know, four or five maybe. And the front page of the newspaper was a picture of me behind bars. Thatcher Faces Gel was the thing. And my little girl could read. Got herself upset. And it's just, you know, obviously there's a police investigation. The severity of it all hit home the following morning. I went to see um, Stuart Pearce, I hadn't slept a wink. And I wanted some guidance what to do really, mm. and just, just some help. And uh, Paul Till at the time, and uh, his assistant Rosie, you know, I basically lived with him for 24 hours. And I just said, listen, I need to know what to do. You know, I've got some ideas of my own. Um, you know, obviously first and foremost, the player's safety and um, his, his well-being. And I was just praying that nothing was wrong with him in terms of miss, terms, yeah, yeah. miss his football career. Um, I wrote a letter to him, mm. you know, I thought about phoning him, but if it was me and he'd done it to me, would I answer the phone to him? Probably not. So I wrote a letter to him, uh, apologising, you know, and it's, it's a hard, it's a hard one to write. I, to be honest, I don't even know if he, he might have opened it, seen it and, and thrown it away, yeah. you know, I had no time for it. But I didn't know what else to do, I, you know, I couldn't, I wouldn't have thought he'd want to sit face to face with me. I wouldn't have thought he'd want to speak to me on the phone. So I wrote him a letter. Um, I also wrote to the referee who I found, you know, a lovely fella, Dermot Gallagher, a really nice fella. You yeah. know, I've, I've, I've uh, since had conversation with him and I felt bad for the stick that he was getting. You know, first of all, yeah, I, well, yeah, he, he was getting stick because, and I felt bad for that, you know. Yeah. Listen, it's, uh, I've, you know, I felt terrible for the, for the player and what I'd done. You know, it's it just a massive moment of regret. So it wasn't really until you'd seen the footage the day after that you realised the severity of it? Yeah, I mean, look, I got eight mail coming through the post, I was called everything, yeah. and, you know, it's it, not so much me, I felt obviously for the player, and then other side of the player, my mum having to go to the supermarket, yeah. whispering, you know, my little girls at school and parents <laughs> at the school, and, you know, if there's just one, you know, 30 seconds of your life, if you could just have it back, and, you know, if I could have just, you know, shutting the ball down instead of doing that, yeah. you know, it's just, it is one moment, you know, I've left an indelible mark on a game of football and it's not for anything good, which is, you know. Well, I hope Mendes watches this and then he... I haven't met him, you know, and it's, it, you know, I go to Portugal a lot and you, you know, you might meet him in a cafe or a thing, I don't know, I'd, you know, I'd only apologise to him and, you know, we, we actually played, I joined Charlton and we played Portsmouth um, away Obviously, the Man City fixture. And did he play? He played, yeah, and I shook his hand in the thing, but I wasn't sure if he was going to shake my yeah. hand. And you know, before the game, then. before the game, yeah, and it was, um, you know, I felt embarrassed to be honest mm. with you. And I, it was um, wasn't nice, and uh, we ended up getting a good result. Charlton was struggling at the time, and uh, you can imagine the stick I've got down there. And it, it is a shame because, you know, I've got family down in Winchester. I was going to watch Portsmouth games, I was going to watch Southampton mm. games, and it's just. Um, you know, it's just Still so regrettable. Well. Yeah. Now that uh, you've obviously finished playing, do you, do you watch TV either watch football on TV or live? Do you ever? Yeah, I go to a lot of games. I've got two boys. Um, the youngest one was born in Wivenshaw. Uh, he's a Mank, Sportsman City. He gets two less Christmas presents uh, than the other kids. Alfie and Teddy, of course. Yeah, Teddy ones. gets two less at Christmas. One because he's Northern, and two because he's junior. So uh, other than that, he's um, he's on the firm. But 
with Man City come down to London, we try and watch them games. I brought him up to the Barcelona game, which he really, really enjoyed. Uh, a good friend of mine, Les Chapman, sorted me out some tickets. Uh, I think I still own the money. And unfortunately, the older one's been brainwashed with Chelsea oh from the granddad. Oh um, so in our area, we go and watch Chelsea, Fulham, AFC Wimbledon. I try and drag him down to Millwall, but they learn too many new words when they're down there, so I get told off by the wife. It's been an absolute pleasure seeing you again. Um, it's a pity you do live down this end of the woods, and you want to come up north anyway. The weather's better. Yeah, you brought the weather down with you today, so. Well, great seeing you again, and thank you, Mr. Chapman. Soon. Take care.